What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we have ourselves a track from an act named Bleed Moxie, titled Out On My Own. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on the screen. This is the first single, as I understand it, from their upcoming album, Women's Society, which is due on, I think it's the 5th of April, if I'm not mistaken, of this year. So we're going to listen through this track from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. A fantastic sub bass response. And it's just very busy off the bat, isn't it? We're very eager to keep the listeners' attention. It's interesting. The vocal style is kind of unique. I kind of dig it. Um, it's easy to follow along to, even if there's a lot going on with the different vocal chops as well as the drums and the bass and everything else. Grand Fusion the lead as a secondary layer in this uh, second half. I was wondering if the verse vocals in the center were like a little bit too quiet in regards to the rest of the mix. Some of the lady backings on the side seemed a little bit sort of dominant, but that could just be stereo positioning when they head within the headphones. I mean, it's just a hell of a bass response that I'm wondering if that is affecting the limiting on the track and it's like relative value with this. I mean, it's, it's side chains really neatly. I mean, like it's um, a song that's really easy to follow along to in regards to the structure as well. I like these uh, breaks after the verse sections where things kind of come down a little bit. You've just got these warm kind of sounds that almost create this interesting sort of like, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but there's a bit of tension there because of those sounds that almost could be sort of like a siren or something like that. All right, that's interesting. Um, I think that there's a lot to appreciate here. Uh, I'll talk about it more in the conclusion, a little bit some more of the nuance, but I think uh, a lot of this is really positive, and especially as a first impression, I'm really happy with it. 
Because welcome to the conclusion, the conclusion of this review. Actually, before I continue, I want to sort of like remove myself and um, give a shout out to the credits here. We have Bleed Moxie as the main artist, Mitchell Paulson as the composer and lyricist, and Hayden Hallett as the producer. Something that uh, Spotify has been doing recently has been allowing people to put credits in their uh, songs, in their songs that they upload. So I'm going to try and do that in the future just so that people have that to reference if they're interested, which I think is really important. It's good, important to credit people, which they've done, which Bleed Moxie has done. It's important to credit people who are involved in your track so that people understand the scope of what's involved, you know. Um, the track itself, I think it's about someone who is just really done with this other person and they want to move on from them. And I think there might have been some sort of like, uh, some, some, some really uncomfortable stuff going on. They really just want to escape and go out and get drunk and just kind of try and forget this person, just find a way to sort of cure themselves of that sickness that they had, that uh, feeling of love for that person so they can have a new chapter, I suppose. Which I, I think is something that a lot of people will be able to relate to. I'm sure a lot of people have wanted to move on from like a relationship, whether it was a good or a bad one, you know. It's, you, you just got to find some way to do it, even if it takes time. Sometimes you want to rush it. And anyways, I mean, I think that's an interesting story. The vocals with the clean parts and the ver choruses and then the rat parts in the verses, as well as the more spoken stuff or sing kind of melodic sort of melodic. The clean parts in the bridges and choruses, should I say. There are different approaches to it. I liked the call and response between the lady vocals and Bleed Moxie in the, in the chorus parts there. They went between each other. It was um, catchy and followed um, the kind of fundamentals of hook lines and choruses. You can tell that he's spent a lot of time sort of polishing and practicing and, and, and because of the fact that those words, as quickly as they were coming out, they, they came through really clearly. And it's not easy to rap at that speed. A lot of the more sort of modern hip hop and rap has kind of gone towards more sort of triplety kind of stuff. You know, and, and sometimes those can come through quickly. You know, but those 16th notes there, you're not screwing around with those. And there's a very large chance that if you're not proficient, it's just going to end up like a blurry kind of fuzzy mess, which we didn't have here. So that's, that's really positive. I think in addition to that, what we had going on with um, just the, 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 what he was talking about, the intensity of the performances, the change with the way he was expressing himself between like it was a bit more sort of like casual in those chorus parts you know trying to be a bit more sort of like palatable or maybe but then the verses it was a bit more intense a bit more sort of like stick behind it and i, I dig it i dig that duality there i think it's great to uh, show different sides of yourself as a rapper as a vocalist to sort of give authenticity and lend credence to what you're trying to discuss there well handled the vocal, I think the vocals are great. The lady singer in the background had fantastic sort of light technique as well. And basically, it was a very, and there were, I think there were double trackings of like the main vocals as well as some of those chorus parts that we get, which is maybe in the verses as well. And in some bits of that just gave it a bit more sort of oomph there. I know that I said that like I thought it was kind of quiet in the mix. I, I, I'm wondering if these headphones, I don't listen to these through speakers. So maybe through speakers, there's a bit more sort of light definition with the main vocals in the mix. But that's just me sort of being transparent in the review process. The track at 3 minutes 30 comprises of several verse sections, choruses. I think it, if I'm, you know, like, you don't really need more than that, do you? There, I think there were bridges as well, uh, and some instrumental parts as well with the guitars, bass, drums, etc. Um, it was sick. I think the transitions between the different sections were seamless and easy to sort of like bounce along to. It was smooth. There was enough, uh, there was, a, there was a relative continuity in the intensity of it throughout where I don't think that was a detriment, but if this track had been longer, I would have been wanting more. I would have been wanting maybe like a different chord progression or something like that, um, to kind of sort of like give different points of like, uh, to sort of segment them and make them more noticeably different, not just from a vocal perspective, but also from like, how do I describe it? I think it would have been good potentially to have alternate leads, for example, if this track had gone longer, but because it was in that two to four minute sweet spot, it was enough to have the main vocalist kind of rapping and singing and then to have like the backings on the side there for the time that we did. The instruments that I liked in this were basically, I think the drums, the grooves we had in the kit there were relatively simple, but they had a great sort of punch to them. We were comfortable with the Ace of Sixteenths there and they side chained really neatly. Uh, the bass itself with the 808s was very strong. And we definitely knew when it was there. And I kind of missed it when it wasn't. 
For me, I was wondering if the base was like maybe a little bit too dominant in the mix. I know that it's good to push that 808 if it was an 808 there, especially if you got side chaining involved and stuff like that. It could be nice to have a bit more sort of like kind of like energy in that sub base, but. At the same time, it did sound like some of the other bits of the mix were a little bit sort of quieter, and that could just again be the headphones, but if that was kind of pushing the limiter, we could have potentially have reduced the auto a little bit to have pushed up the limiter a bit more and get a bit more sort of overall volume. But yeah, I think that the bass lines that were performed by the 808s were nice and sort of sleek and simple to follow along to. They had a great, um, they sound a professional grade, and the guitar riffs that sort of flew alongside it on top were stellar as well. I think that we had some interesting sort of bendy riffs, some little licks there that uh, accentuated like the second half of the chorus really neatly. But we didn't have any sort of like crazy shred solos or too much sort of emphasis on limited to high elements that distracted from the vocals, which I think is kind of what we might have been looking for. Is because you know, I mean, with with a lot of rap and hip hop, the, the vocals are the focal point. You know, the main part of it. It was, yeah, it was like a three note bass line for the vast majority of it and uh, we carried that and the theme itself sounded kind of wistful we had a situation where we simply i think wanted to show that we were trying to sort of cope with it the major or minor chords we had there without extension simplified that was pretty black and white we just wanted to get out there and just kind of forget it we get it happened to move on and I, again, I think those bluesy parts added a bit of edge to it, as well as a kind of fizzy 808s here with a bit of sizzle to them. There were moments where we took away that low and it allowed things to kind of, kind of float there, and I think that was great too, simply because it provided a sense of dynamic range to the track, even though there wasn't a huge amount of like overall sort of difference in the perceived volume. I think with all that in mind, if I consider what the song is about, the way the instruments were played, the way things were handled, I think that overall the different ingredients work together, the theme matches the lyrics, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's a note out of place. The studio recording Mexican mastering, I, I think outside of my comments about the vocals maybe being a little bit too quiet in the center, everything else was fantastic. I mean, the vocals on the side were nicely placed and now are very present. Uh, we, we had, again, the bass and throw into it was just thunderous. Uh, the drums were nicely controlling that though. There was a good amount of side chaining going on there without being too overzealous with it. The guitars are nice and present in the mid to high range primarily, I think, because they were EQ to filtered, so they sat up there and uh, things were glued neatly together, leveling overall was tight. Uh, yeah, no resonant frequencies in the frequency spectrum, nice and wide in the stereo field, so things surrounded you in the headphones. Because I think that I, I think there were some violin guitar takes here where you kind of roll the the uh, the volume up after you pick the note, kind of kind of like remove the attack on it, and that almost created a sort of a synthy lead thing that was going like between the sides of the headphones, like maybe that part was on one side, and then you'd have like the lead guitar on the other kind of popping off. And uh, again, it wasn't too overwhelming. It was just nice to have that point of difference there and to kind of be following stuff along and be intrigued by it. There was a bit of dynamic range in here, not a massive amount, but enough to kind of keep the track again sounding consistent enough to sort of keep us going. You know, like it, it wasn't sort of smothered or anything like that, And but it was still nice and loud without pumping. So the bus compression and limiting was handled. And effectively, this is my review of this track from an act named Bleed Moxie, titled Out On My Own off of their upcoming album, Woman's Society, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go check out their various social medias and their Spotify page, and stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as you the hell more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world, and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider Hands out.